Okay, today I'm going to show you how to calculate beta. Uh, beta is the a constant that's used in the capital asset pricing model, which is called a lot of times called the cap M. And I'm not going to talk about the cap M too much. I'm just going to concentrate on how to calculate beta, which is the constant that's used in the cap M. Um, in order to start beta, calculate beta, you need historical prices. Uh, so beta is a backward looking constant and it tries to estimate what's going to happen in the future using historical prices. And so one of the good place, one good place to get historical prices is Yahoo Finance. So I'm going to go to finance.yahoo.com and uh, in order to calculate beta, first you need the return, the prices, uh, you need the market prices. And when you go into yahoo.finance, they have several markets listed already. Uh, normally, people use the S&P 500. So we'll just go ahead and click on that. If that doesn't show up on your screen, you could just type in a carrot uh, GSPC. And that would also take you to the S&P 500. You see it right here. All right. So once you get to the S&P 500, we want to get historical data. So I'm going to click on this right here. And we're, we're on this example, we'll just go ahead and go back five years. So I'm going to go five years and done. And then I want to apply that. So now we have five years of daily prices going back. Okay. From November 2nd to uh, 2011 to November 2nd of 2016. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to simply download that data. Okay. So now it's downloaded it. I'm going to click on it right here. And my, my computer set to open it up on Excel automatically when I click on it. Yours most likely will be too. And I'm going to go between A and B and double click in order to be able to see these dates. And I just want this column, the adjusted close, and I want these dates. So I'm going to simply highlight across A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I'm going to right click and go delete and get rid of all those. I'm also going to click on column B and change that to prices in dollars. All right. So now, and I will I'll call, I'll label this S&P 500. And we'll just say market. We're using this to estimate the market prices okay uh and then i'm also since this is saved as a csv file i'm going to go ahead and resave it so i'm going to go file uh save as and i'm going to save it into a folder here uh let me see i'll save it into my finance class I want to save it as an Excel spreadsheet. Let me save it as a newer one, the top one. Calculating beta, I'll call it. And so now I've saved it as calculating beta on Excel. All right. And now instead of being a CSV, it's an Excel file. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is get, uh, I'm going to calculate beta as a stock specific uh, constant. So, uh, so I have to go pick a stock. So I'm going to go back to Yahoo Finance. And those of you that are doing this assignment, you need to pick a different stock. So I'm going to pick IBM. And you should be picking something else if you're doing this for my class as an assignment. Now I want all the students to have a different stock. All right. All right. So now we have IBM. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to go to historical data. And I'm going to go back five years, historical prices daily. And I'm going to go apply it. And I'm going to download that data. I'm going to open that up. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight these and delete them. And I'm going to call this IBM and change these to prices. And then I'm going to copy this over to the other spreadsheet. So I'm going to highlight these. Now, instead of scrolling all the way down to highlight them, I'm going to do what's called a shortcut key on Excel. I'm going to hold down the shift key, S H I F T. Hit the end key, E-N-D, and then hit the down arrow. And it's going to go all the way down to the bottom and highlight them all. 
and that's a very useful business function because a lot of times on, on, on business spreadsheets you get a lot of rows you don't have to be scrolling down all the time and I'm going to hit right click I'm going to go copy and I'm going to go back to that other spreadsheet and I'm going to skip a column and I'm going to paste it right here okay so now I have all our all our, our uh, prices and I can go ahead and close that other spreadsheet that I just had we don't need it anymore so now we have this to work with so the next thing I want to do is I want to do the returns so I'm going to do uh, the return on the market and I'm going to do the return on IBM okay and I'm going to do something called continuous returns instead of percent returns if I was going to do percent returns I would simply go uh, the what we ended up with so it's going to be equal to parentheses what we ended up with minus what we started with and close the parentheses divide by what we started with and that'll be my percent return and it's negative because the prices went down and so i want to make this percent i can take it out a couple places all right um to be more exact we could use something called the continuous return let me copy this just so you see this i'm going to go copy i'm going to paste this as a value over here so we can compare it okay so let's do continuous return now. So the continuous return assumes that it's compounded continuously. So I'm going to go equals a natural log of this divided by this. Okay. And you can see they're fairly close, but most of the time in finance, uh, for, for, for the, these type of calculations, you will use continuous return. Okay. okay. You can see they're very close. You're probably going to get a fairly same, a very close answer when you calculate beta. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. So we're using continuous return, which is the natural log of this, divided by that. And again, you can check if it's right because it's going to be negative because going from the 31st of October to the 1st of November, the price went down, so it should be a negative return. So I'm simply just going to double click to copy that all the way down. And I'm going to copy it over here. And I'm going to paste it. I'm going to go to the bottom right hand corner and double click there. And I'm going to go down to the bottom. And if you go down to the bottom, you can see the, the, it's got this division by zero on the last one. And the reason for that, if I double click on it, you can see that it's this divided by this. Well, there's nothing here. You need two days in order to get a return, and we don't have this day. And it's causing it to divide by zero because we don't have the information we need. So I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to click delete on that just to fix that. We can't have this last last calculation all right so now we have the return on the market and the return on ibm and you calculate I, the beta using the returns you can't calculate it using the prices you gotta use the returns all right so we could graph this um i, I can highlight this i can highlight all of these returns and then in order to do two two sets of non-contiguous data I have to hold on the control key and I can start these and go shift and down to get these. And I'm going to go back up to the top again. Now I'm going to insert a graph. So I'm going to go insert and I'm going to do a scatter plot, which is this one with the dots. I'm going to pick this first one and it gives me this nice little scatter plot. And you can see beta is simply the slope of the best fit the, the best line that fits this all this data you know these data is this plots of each each one of these pairs so the return on the market is this axis and the return on ibm is the vertical axis okay and beta is simply the slope of the best line the least squares regression line uh, or the linear regression line that fits this data and we could put that in here real quickly i could click on one of these dots and then while i over the dot i can right click and go add trend line. I want a linear trend line, and we're going to go ahead and display the equation and display the arc square. And I close that, and it shows it shows the equation of that line, and it shows the r squared. And r squared is basically how well the data, how close that data is to being on that line. If r squared was exactly one, every one of these dots would be on this line. So, so this basically, this is a this kind of tells you how good the model is. The closer it's to zero, the worse your model is. 
the closer it to 1, the better your model is. When you're calculating beta, that's probably not too bad of an R-squared, but statistically, that's not a very good R-squared. And this 0.8708 is the slope of this line, and that's your beta. Okay? So the way to calculate it without graphing, what I could do, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all this data. I'm not going to highlight R sub M, but I'm just going to highlight all this data. Shift in down. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click RM, and I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to highlight all this data, shift in down. And I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go R, IBM, and hit enter. Now I have that data. Now Excel knows if I go to RM, it highlights that data. If I go RBM, it's going to highlight that data. So now I can use that in formula without having to go highlight it all the time. All right, so now I'm going to type beta. I'm going to say equals the covariance of a population. I'm going to say between the return on the market and the return on IBM divided by the variance of a population. Uh, and then the, the variance, we want the variance of the market. And we get 0.87. And this is what we don't want percent. So I'm going to make this a number. It's a constant. Take it out a couple places. And you can see that's the same number we had there, 0.8708. An alternative way to, let me put the formula here so you see the formula. C equals formula text. Okay. Uh, an alternative way to calculate it, I could go equals the slope of the return on the, well, it says the known y's. The known y's is this axis, the RIBM. So the RIBM. And the slope of the, the x axis is these, the one that go along here, that's the market. And I get the same answer, right? Let me format that the same. And that's the formula for that. Also, without graphing it, I could do the R squared. R squared in Excel is actually equal to R, RSQ. And if you use uh, known Y's or R, IBM, known X's or R, M. And that's the R squared. And you can see that that's the same as this number we have here. So you can get those numbers without graphing it. But graphing it sometimes, some people think that's easier. It's also nice to look at your data. These would be called outliers here, right? Because these don't really fall at all along the line. And they influence this R squared also, all these things out here. Okay. Um, an easier way to do it, I could also go, a lot of people aren't aware of this website. It's kind of a, it's a pretty neat website that's worth exploring. I'm going to go to somewhere called Wolfram Alpha.com. Okay. And this does a lot of different calculations. Uh, and it's pretty neat to explore. But right now I'm just going to say beta IBM. And it's thinking here. And it went back the last five years, just like we did. And it has daily returns versus the S&P 500, just like we did. So I basically uh, wanted, I knew I was going to come here and look, right? So um, beta is 0 0.870. And that's what we have, 0 0.871, basically. And it shows the R squared is 0.386. Our R squared is 0 0.381. So fairly close. Maybe they use percent returns instead of continuous returns like I did. But it's close enough for what you would use in a financial calculation. So um, hopefully that helps. Uh, again, if you're doing this for an assignment in class, uh, you require every, all the students are required to use a different stock. So I don't want to see the same stock from any one student. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.